Welcome to the World Series of Boxing matchup between the Los Angeles Matadors and the Memphis Force from the DeSoto Civic Center just across the border from Memphis, Tennessee and South Haven, Mississippi. I'm Alan Masson, get alongside Sean O'Grady, the Matadors tonight. Team with a lot of depth, roll out a great lineup and come in in first place in this series. And Memphis, they're going to shake things up tonight, Sean. Coach Anthony Bradley's going to bring in three new fighters. Yeah, he's got new fighters on the on the skid because he is trying to rejuvenate his whole team. And as a coach, he has to be cognizant of everybody on that team. They all want to coalesce and see if they can uh, beat the Matadors. All of our teams have done very well at home. They've all won their homestand. And uh, this con tonight could be the first upset of a homestand from the L.A. Matadors. The L.A. Matadors is an outstanding team. Okay, let's take a look at the lineup card tonight. That's what I thought was coming up. Rashi Warren is the... Uh, uh, he's the headliner tonight. You've got about it. You'll be the first yeah. one in the ring. He's the captain yeah. of the Matadors, has more international experience, bought in the Olympics with the 17th. You like that bantamweight matchup, Everton Lopez and Raynell Williams. Olympic implications are there. Well, I tell you what, they're a couple of lightweights. They both represented their countries during the uh, 2008 Olympics. They did not fight one another, but they know a lot about each other, and that should be an interesting, very, very strategic bout. Well, that's what the World Series of Boxing is all about, all right, these international about superstars. So right now, right let's now get it up there television. to Michael Kelly, our ring announcer. Representing the Los Angeles Matadors, Rasheed Warren. And now, representing your Memphis Force, Ronnie Peebling. Ruddy Pablick is an unknown quantity. First time we've seen him, really, but he's not unknown around the world. He's 2009 World Bronze International Champion. He's been boxing 10 years. He's 24 years old. He's in the German Army. He's a Lance Corporal, two-time German champion. He's a four-time German flyweight champion. So he's six times he's won a German champion, twice at 108 pounds, and four times flyweight champion, the German champion. And uh, really comes into this match really undaunted. He has seen his opponent from afar, but he's never been in the ring with him. So it should be interesting to see how this match is going to the mat the head-to-head -head matchup, Paige. And, uh, you know, you can see that uh, the age, a little bit of the age difference, about the same height, uh, about the same weight. So this should be a, a very interesting bout. Welcome to the DeSoto Civic Center. Our first bout of the evening will be a five-round battle in the Bantamweight division. Introducing first the blue corner, representing the Los Angeles Matadors and fighting out of his hometown of Cincinnati, Ohio, the 2004 and 2008 Olympic team member and captain of the Matadors. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rasheed Warren. No, no. And his opponent in the red corner, representing your Memphis Force, and fighting out of his hometown of Chemnitz, Germany, the 2004 to 06, the 08 and 09 German national champion at flyweight, and the 2010 bronze medalist in the flyweight division at the European Championships. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Roddy Beebler! Final instructions from our referee. Uh, I think he'll bring him to the center of the ring, Sean. Oh, Your referee for this bout cool. is Gerardo Pozzi. Well, usually checking the mouthpiece, make sure they have cups, they, they're prepared to fight, their gloves are all um, in position. They Velcro them now, don't they? And they then do. they put a little tape around them. Okay, yeah. with schedule. Yeah, I like that. I like that. That's an improvement that needs to be used. And, you know, they, they tape some of the other gloves and just not efficient. Now, uh, now they Velcro them. That's a great way to do it. Five rounds, three-minute rounds. As we explained at the top of the show, there is uh, no headgear. They're fighting uh, 
under a 10 point must system. Professional scoring. Rushy Warren, you see he's the southpaw. Trivia get in on Warren. The only other two time Olympic champion in boxing for the United States was Davy Lee Armstrong in 72 in Munich and 76 in Montreal. Fought as a professional, didn't uh, do a whole lot of professional, had a pretty good record. But Rushy Warren, you see how fast he is, Sean. Yeah, very fast. He's seeking to become the first boxer ever from America for three Olympics. That left hand is wicked. We saw it in that first fight that he won handily against Roberto Navarro of Miami. Warren's just the full package, and I like to see his development now that they're not wearing headgear. I, I think he really enjoys getting scored on his power shots and what he can do, the full package, the quickness. And, uh-oh, well, I was just talking about the yeah, gloves. The tape just came up. Yeah. The Velcro. <laughs> Vel what was the, was Velcro? Velcro? Well, they, got, they, they yeah. tape around the Velcro a little bit. So. Oh, well, the tape is what comes loose. Yeah, I, 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 always, as always. Prove that. You know, <laughs> have not left hand just got in. Bevlick just got caught by a left hand. Look at the speed of Rushy Warren. You know, I'm talking to Bevlick, he's not daunting. Oh, no, I'm not worried about it. He's, he was looking forward to see how he would stack up. The competition is what he was looking for in this match. Rashid's landed a big uh, right hand to follow up that left hand. He landed early. Uh, speed kills in this uh, sport, and this guy's got it. He's oh, he's so package. good. He is so good. He's been boxing. Rashid has since he was six years old. He started his first fight at eight years old. He grew up in the same gym as Aaron Pryor. So he that learned movement. A lot, of, a lot of skill from Aaron Pryor. They have movement, Sean. The, the defense, it kind of reminds so me good. of uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather, actually. Oh, yeah. He's so good. It's hard to hit. You can't hit him with a handful of salt. <laughs> you can't catch him. Yeah, he... Aaron Pryor's gym there in Cincinnati oh, yeah. at the age of six, the East Side Gym, very mm -hmm. famous gym. Baby Pit, they call him. Yeah, he, he just told us about that for the season start. Like a baby pit bull. Oh, Bullock just got a little shot in there. You can't get too comfortable. bevlick has got good international credentials. He just doesn't have the speed quite to match up. He can't seem to, <laughs> well, he can't hit him. Plus, he's fighting on the other side of the world. You know, he got here Monday. Right. He's already fighting in a, in a this is a world-class match here. Four days later. He, he looked tired in the in the instructions. I was looking into his eyes. He just looks he looks tired, you know, as he should imagine. be. Yeah, it's the other side of the world. This time he's usually asleep. This time, right now it's about you know 3 a.m. 3:30 in in uh, his home country. Takes a while to adjust to that. That's for sure. Chemnitz, Germany, eastern side of Germany. Another thing is where he's from. One of the things is you look at Rushy Warren, one of the headliners for sure in the World Series of Boxing. You've got to remember, when he was in the Olympics the first time, he was not only the youngest boxer at the Olympics at age 17, he was the youngest athlete, period, at those Olympics at age 17. He'll be the first to go in three Olympics. Okay, round one, solid round for the two-time Olympian from Cincinnati. All right, let's talk about what we saw the first time out with Rashi Warren. I mean, it was a dominating performance against Roberto Navarro of Miami. And uh, he did what we expected to do and what you're seeing tonight. There he is. This guy was no slouch. Now, this is a tough competitor, but Warren, look at this. Uppercut there, Sean. He just uh, wore him down. That was Gonzalez, and he is a, a terrific uh, uh, fighter in Warren. Warren smacks well to the body, smacks well to the head. He is a, a, a solid fighter in there. He uh, knows how to throw all the punches, even underneath. When his opponent's leaning over, asking for the, the uppercuts, he gives them to him, and he, he, he works well off of good competition. Rashid Warren could actually be, you know, I talked to him, you know, he should teach some of the other kids on this on this team. He's such a good fighter and has so much knowledge about the sport of boxing. You're in South Haven, Mississippi, just across the border from Memphis with the Memphis Force in the purple trunks with the orange trim, represented in the bantamweight division by Robbie Bevlick, taking on Rushy Warren from Cincinnati, Ohio, the visiting L.A. Matadors. Keep in mind, folks, these are five-round fights. This is the second round of five in the bantamweight division, our first fight of the evening. And um, they usually come out hot like they did in the first round here, especially with lighter weights. And the home team so far has won every time in this series. And Memphis is on the bottom of the standings right now and like to take advantage of that fact. But uh, big underdog there, the German from Chemnitz, Germany, Robbie Beblick, taking on the two-time Olympian who hopes to be a three-time Olympian, Rashi Warren. You'll see the speed and the quickness of Warren. He has no fear. He's got great defense. Beblick trying to find a range here, but kind of hard to hit what you can't find, like John was saying. Oh, he's so good in the, in the ring, Rashi. It's, it's hard for anybody to hit him because he turns and he gives you different angles. There's a couple of good shots from Ronnie. 
Ronnie had a lot of confidence coming in this. He wanted to see, test his skills against somebody like a Rashid Warren. It, it, well, that's about as high as you're going to get oh, yeah. in, this, in the international competition. Uh-oh. That would just caught Rashid with a right hand. Crowd likes the Memphis fighter putting on a game effort. Coming back, he might be winning this round, too. Devlin needs a nice a, uppercut there from Devlin. A boost of something, and that, that could be just what gets him over the top. You know, looking at him, there's, look at Manny Robles. This is an outstanding trainer. He's the, the uh, coach, coach of the uh, Matadors, and he is great. Rashi is so tied into him. They were back in the back while, while Rashi's hands were being wrapped for tonight's fight. And he is so tied into him, he listens to everything that, he, that Manny says. Manny guides him through these fights. It is so important for this, for this coach to have a, a, a dialect with the fighter. And this is a coach that also has to coach the rest of the team. And he's got to pick, you know, pick and choose. It's a different element for coaches of boxing. Normally, the, the coaches, are like one boxer will have one coach that stays with him throughout. This is a, fight, this is a coach that has to has to have many different players on his team, not just Rashi, but all the other ones. Good right hook from Rashi. Rashi punches backwards, too. Watch him going backwards. He, he'll throw he hard left shots. There. He's, he's just, he could do anything. He can throw from all different angles with you. I think it's been a really good round, though, for Beblik, who had checked up the tempo after yeah. that first round, maybe shook out the cobwebs and said, hey, this is a different type of deal I'm in here. Yeah. This is, uh, this you know, is watching, watching professional scoring. Before this started, Beblik was completely bone dry. He had no... You, you're, you're taught to kind of get warmed up a little bit. You can do that here in the World Series of Boxing because you have a, a schedule. Uh, he was like bone dry. He came in the ring without, uh, you like to see a little bead of sweat on your fighters. You see some sweat on him now, though. Well, he's doing a good job being an aggressor here. He's trying to cut off that distance between him and Rashi Warren. We didn't see how Rashi responds when we go to the third round, but I think the German had a pretty good round here. Oh, wow. Yep, drew some blood. Jerry caught him. Second round. He had, a, he had an excellent round. I think Bedwick won that round. Bedwick, I, I gave him that round as well, but uh, the, the nosebleed, that tells you that somebody's connecting up there. And our nosebleed is so hard to stop. It is so hard to stop. You cut inside the nose, and you can't see the, the cut to get the fragment to it. Here's some of that action from that second round and a good round it was for Ronnie Bablick. He scored well and he, he was thinking in that second round. He still got tagged a couple of times but I think overall he landed the cleaner shots and I, I think he won the second round. Round three scheduled for five, our first fight of the night from Memphis, actually from South Haven, Mississippi, right across the border from Memphis. It's where the home team Memphis Force fights in the DeSoto Civic Center. And what I think that Beblick did well that round was use his footwork to get in position to throw punches. And now he's all fired up, John. Here we go. They're letting it go a little bit right now. He should be against the Southpaw fighters who are taught to throw a real straight right cross, and that's his best weapon for Beblick. Beblick's been fighting for about 10 years, right-handed. About 120 and 30 as a fighter. Rashi, as I predicted, this oh. third round picked it up a little bit. Watch out for the clash of the heads. Rashi tasting his own blood probably oh, yeah. didn't appreciate that too much. Not at all, and that makes you a different fighter when you taste your own blood. Believe me, I'm tasting my <laughs> Beblick not afraid. <laughs> so some broadcasting too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Beblick not afraid now to start really mixing it up and try to fight his kind of fight, which you got to respect him for. He wants to be in there throwing a bunch of punches on the inside. Warren's going to keep him off with that jab. Uh, but uh, Warren, it turned around quickly in him at round number two, and the German, they, he got used to the time change real quick after getting hit a few times in the first round. Oh, she Warren. And the black with the gold for the L.A. Matadors, their headliner, their captain of their team. And Beblick here from Germany making his debut for the Memphis Force. A tremendous international resume for the German fighter. He has six German titles to his credit. Oh, he's a lot trying. of great showings, international competition, yeah. and he is really trying hard, as you can see. He's trying. The first time that he saw Rashid was at the 2007 World Championships, and he said, yeah, he's good. Here they go. They're just throwing down, Sean. Yeah, that's right. Just yeah. open wide up. You want action? We got it. Blood coming through the nose. Oh, oh my hand that hurt. Rashid Warren just hurt the German fighter. Ronnie Beblet caught that one. You could tell he quickly held on right there, which is a 
sure indicator he's hurt. Let's see if Warren can start chopping him down. But he'll still got that uh, dangerous right hand. I think this is damage to Rushy Warren's nose. But Warren doesn't want to hang around too much long if he can get this guy out of here. And the right hook from Warren is very dangerous for Beverly. Because it comes out of nowhere. Of course it does. It's a, it's a hard, difficult punch to see. And you know what they say, the one that don't see is the one that knocks you out. Yeah. Yeah. There it is again. again. Oh, Warren coming in the land of that good right hand. There's a mouse over the left eye right now forming for Beverly. And that's, of course, from that left, excuse me, that right hook, the Rushy Warren. See the German get a little bit gassed now from the, probably from the punches. 27 seconds left in round number three here. It's the Soto Civic Center. Accurate punches there for Rushy Warren. You know, I expected him to bounce back from that round two when he wasn't so crisp and he's doing what a champion does. Come back strong and be very effective here in round three. Blood pouring out of the nose of Rashi Warren now. He fights through it. Left oh. hand landed on the button right there. Right oh. hand, you cannot. You cannot let up any time. Look at that, good round for Rushy. He landed well with the right hand, with the right hook, and the, the left cross was real effective in that round. And blood still coming out of that nose. From Rashi. Something Rashi not usual to, to seeing his own blood. You know, it, it would appear to me that he, he may have a, a something hurting some difficulty in that right hand because he continues to grab the hand and try to roll it up to make a fist in it. It would lead me to believe that there is some kind of ache over there or some kind of pain in that in that right hand. Could have been caused when he hit this guy over that right eye. Take a look at that right hand. Oop, there it is. Bang. Hands are always a big concern for fighters. Of course, your hands are not made to hit other people. And you also hit, like you hit your opponent on the, ooh, that'll hurt your own hands sometimes if you try to beat up. Or hit your opponent on the top of the head or hit him on the elbow, it hurts your hand. Let's go. Round four from South Haven, Mississippi. Rushy Warren showing in that round number three why he is a step above the competition, almost anybody in this competition with the speed. Those punches come fast and accurate, so you can tell he is a special talent. However, this fight is not over. Four rounds scheduled for five, and Ronnie Bedlick of Germany is trying to get something done. He had a good second round, probably lost, I would guess, two of the three rounds, but he's still in there. And Oh, he just oh, got out that left hand. Look at how it's so fast. fast. It just comes in fast. Double jab and a cross. Oh, straight, straight left. Right. Straight left. Pebbles in a little bit of trouble now. Got caught again on the way in. That's the problem. Pebbles doesn't know when to pause because the minute he pauses, uh, he jumps on him like a snake. <laughs> He's on him like a cheap suit. Yeah, he just jumps right on him. There's no way not to protect yourself at all times against the speed that you see in a great international star. In Rashi Warren Jr. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know what? Not only in the ring, but outside the ring. In talking to him, he is just carries himself so well. He's so confident. Ronnie Bevelix decided to really open up. He's coming out wide with those punches, and he's going to pay for that. Because uh, Warren's just too good and accurate to let him get away with throwing wild outside shots. He'll come right up the gut with him. You know, Rashi looks a little like a little bit like a young Roy Jones too. He doesn't waste very many moves, Rashi. He, he moves. He moves well, but he doesn't, he doesn't waste, you don't see him you know, being fainted out of position. He holds his hands a little bit higher than Roy did, uh, but Roy was just pure quickness, and he was a cobra for sure the way he would strike. And he'd always catch you right on the right distance, it seemed. Roy was a genius of footwork and movement and defense and speed. Well, these are two, two people that grew up, you know, around the ring. And two people, Roy and Rashid, that grew up, you know, with their, their parents in, in boxing. So she's a 100% fighter, that's for oh, yeah. sure. He's like he's born in this. Like I said, I already, I already mentioned Mayweather Jr. Mm -hmm. being the product of his senior father, who was a fighter, and his uncle Roger. So some people are just born into this sport. It's part of their blood. It's a, it's a natural thing for them. It just doesn't mean they don't have to work really hard to become great champions. Natural. It's natural. You spend every day in the gym, and you know, every day. Every day, every minute, every hour in the gym, working on perfecting your skills, and that's what Rashi is doing. And right now, Bedwick is wondering, what he has to do to break that, that defense that Rushy has. Well, I or noticed that Rushy, combination. Uh, you, you mentioned his hand, I want to follow up. I, I don't see him throwing it. Well, there it is, he that, that right hand. None of it seems to be bothered. There's a lead right there to the cross. I can tell you, even though you have a hurt hand, you still have to use it. You can't, you cannot allow your opponent to know that it's hurt, if it's hurt. 
Well, usually they'll give a sign, like they'll shake it a little bit, or they'll try to stretch out their shoulder, or do that indication. He seems to be okay right here. But he'll lead with either hand. He's a southpaw, lefty, as you can see. But he'll come in with either hand. He doesn't. Or both hands. <laughs> I've seen that before. <laughs> Not from Rashi, but I've seen it in the cartoon. Well, pretty good. Uh, hey, look, he's a little gassed. Right? He's, he, but these are longer rounds than amateurs yeah. are used to. Yeah. And it's yeah. more intense. Yeah. And you get hit harder without the head gear. And, uh, she picked it up a little bit in that fourth as well. He really had a good third round. But this fella did really well. Ronnie Bailey did in that second round. I think he thought he won the round. That's when he opened up the cut inside the nose of Rashid. This is the flurry they uh, had, Sean, in, in that, that round. fourth. It was uh, Rashid that was really scoring well. It, it appeared to me, too, that Beblik is a little out of gas here in this fourth. He uh, he just made, you know, he, he tested something back in that second round, something new, something different, and it worked for him, and then he, then he quit using it, utilizing it, but it's because of the speed of uh, Rashid Warren. Fifth and final round. This is the fifth and final round of the Bantamweight division. Uh, Rashi Warren Jr. in the black trunks with gold trim, hoping to stay undefeated in the World Series of Boxing. This is a debut for the hometown fighter, Rami Bedlick, who's from a long way away, Jim Leach, Germany. Now, Rami has acquitted himself quite well in this fight, I think. He's in against a guy that's very quick. And he's a tough kid, but Ronnie Bevlick, and I've, I've enjoyed watching him try to give the effort tonight. We'll see how it goes. You know something, Alan? That is one thing about the World Series of Boxing. These kids fighting this, and they learn. And I'm sure Bo Ronnie's learning in there. Well, I don't think either one's going to let it go to the judges at this pace. Nice little shot to the ribs right there that you didn't see. A clash of heads. Got to be careful there. Blood pouring out of those of Rashi Ward right now. He's just going in there. He's going to mix it up now. He's hurting. He's he got a clash of heads. Oh, he oh, just got over the eye, over the right oh, eye. No, that's a clash of heads. Bad cut. Oh, I saw the reaction. That's a shame. It's going to take him out of action for a while. Yeah. Two, two fighters moving forward like this. A couple of uh, bantamweights that close the gap. Plus, right now they're they're fighting with that clock on their back. You know, I wouldn't. Uh, you know, uh oh, hitting behind the head is going to be a warning here from the referee, Gerardo Poggi. Going to look at that cut too. Uh, it's time to look cut. at that cut. Yeah, we're going to. Take a stoppage right now and take a look at how bad it, uh, it really hurt him. I saw him grimace immediately when it happened. We're oh, going to let yeah. it continue. We've got a minute 47 left in round number five. You know what? I wouldn't, uh, you know, this may be closer than we think it is, John. I can tell you what, right now, it's, it, it takes more out of you. Getting head butted. A cut like that from a head butt, it's smart. They flashed head just again. again yeah. They did just now. Well, that's this the da danger of uh, boxing, you know, somebody that's pretty aggressive like Bob Babel gives. Well, she's got some problems to overcome here for sure. He's big here that eye. He can't oh, see they banged well. it again. They've been banging constantly. It turned into a gutter brawl is what it did here in the fifth round. The action is terrific. You can't say enough for the heart of these guys. And this German, he's tough customer. You know, well, she's a better fighter when he backs up. The rest of this fight, it, you know, just, just back up and let him run into your punches. He's going to come after you because, in my opinion, Bedwick needs to make a, a statement here at the end. Don't rush in, because when Rashid rushes in, he's, he's banging heads with this guy. Well, Rashid didn't want it to go to the judges. I think he didn't mind mixing it up, and that's exactly the fight that Bedwick wanted. So it may have cost him here in the fifth round. Remember that uh, good second round that Bedwick had. Good. And blood torn for Rashid. He sees, you know, look at the intensity of Rashid. Blood on his face, blood yeah. dripping from his nose, and he's throwing those hard punches, and he's, he might be just a little bit angry in there. You know something, that's guts and that's determination. I know because I had blood streaming from my face. You're still in there fighting with the blood. You know, he had blood in the second round from his nose, and blood from the, from the fifth round uh, from his eye. That is hard. This kid's got hard. Time winding down, uh, both fighters exhausted and holding. Eight seconds, seven seconds left in round five. It has been a war, and that's what we expect to see in the World Series of Boxing. It's been some tremendous action from start to finish. Wow, what a fight. Rashi really got on the bitter end of the yeah. head butts and the nose problem, Sean. Sure. And I, I don't know how this judge is going to well, go. The judge is going to go on this one. I'm I telling think Rashi got the, got the decision. I think he, on my card, you know, three feel like he won. I, 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 what worries me is the cut. That uh, That's such a... Uh, a detrimental thing that happens to a young fighter. 
get better. And for Bedlick, you know what? He he learned some stuff tonight. He he saw the a different side. He didn't know what to expect from Rashi. There was a there was a headbutt. I don't think that That's one was the one that did it. It's on the other side of the head. They Unless clash. it was really hard. No, they <laughs> <laughs> knocks the blood out of the other side of his head. What a shot! <laughs> uh, they clashed a little bit earlier than that, and the uh, blood continued to stream down. You can see it there on the side of Rashi's head. So he's got a happy camper right now. Uh, we'll be going to the judges' decisions. Once again, wall-to-wall -wall action. You've seen it time after, time after time after time here in the World Series of Boxing as they bring you back to South Haven, Mississippi and the DeSoto Civic Center, which is the home of the Memphis Force. This is the where they picked up their one victory of the year. They changed their lineup a little bit, brought in some new blood, and Robbie Bevett was able to draw blood from Rashi Warren tonight. And the headbutt, also a punch to the nose. So it was a tough night for the two-time Olympian and one of the great headliners of this series, the World Series of Boxing. You see that cut. He uh, has a few things to say. I'm fine. That's boxing. That's what I was born to do. I've been doing it since I was six years old. As we're getting ready for the decision to enter the ring, we'll find out why this one was judged. And it might be pretty close, folks. I never know how boxing judges are going to go, but this one's going to be, I think, a pretty close decision, but I have been wrong before. There he is, Robbie Bedlick. I found out one thing about the kid from Germany. He is one tough customer, and his resume and the great success he's had in Europe, he really brought it tonight. In the World Series of Boxing Ring, we go to the judges' scorecard for tonight's decision. Judge number one scores the bout 46-49. Judge number two scores the bout 46-49. And judge number three scores the bout 43 to 50 for your winner by unanimous decision, representing the Los Angeles Matadors, Rasheed Warren. Well, it wasn't that close. One guy had really a blowout. That's the correct scoring, 50 to 43. I, I, don't, I can't see that. I don't think there's any two-point rounds or 10-8 rounds. So I, that might have been incorrectly announced. That might have been 50-45, but we're going to get reaction from Sean O'Grady. And uh, very dominating, but a rough night, Sean. Uh, he, he, got, he got roughed up a little bit. Yeah, roughed up his right, Alan. A little bit of a cut over your right eye. It looks like it's about, oh, I don't know, three-eighths of an inch maybe. Uh, it, when, when did you feel that? In the fourth round or the fifth round? Uh, it was, uh, I think, like the fifth round. The fifth round? Yeah, when he hit I mean, he had, yeah, he hit me with a nice head bump, but um, it kind of took me out of the fight a little bit because, you know, this is something new to me. This is my second pro fight, so... I mean, I kept listening to my coach in the corner, keep fighting, so I kept my composure and kept fighting. Well, in the second round, he, he, he got you pretty good with the nosebleed. What happened there? Uh, that's not a problem. My nose always bleed, you know, <laughs> like in training. So it's, it's not a big factor what? to me, my nosebleed, because it's going to continue to let me, make me fight anymore. I know what you mean. Your nose kind of sits right there on most people's front of their face, and it gets hit first. What, what do you learn from tonight's fight? Uh, I learned, you know, um, my competitors was out there, they some great fighters. So I, I take my hats off to everybody that's in my weight because I know they coming. So they don't do nothing but push me to the uh, limit and make me keep fighting. Hey, when they fight in Rashid Warren, they're going to fight above their ability. This kid here came to, came to fight today. How did you beat him? Uh, listening to my corner, you know, I, I went in there by myself. I had my corner in there with me and I was listening to everything they were saying, using my jab and I kept working. Love it. I love it. Rashid Warren, he gets a victory. L.A. gets a victory. Way to go. Thank you, Memphis. How about that? Memphis people here supporting Rashid Warren. This kid is really good. I'll tell you what, Alan. I like this kid. I think he's the class of the L.A. Matadors. What do you think? Well, he certainly proved it. He talked about how mature he is. I think he and Coach Robles over there have certainly struck up a great friendship and a collaboration. One it is now one fight for uh, the Matadors, which is a long way to go tonight. Uh, that was a very good performance by the German, I thought. But also, Rashi says, hey, this is just my prof second professional fight, so look how much I have to learn. The nosebleed is not a problem. The head cut is good.